Hello friends, here in this video we will see a derivation of a formula on torque required to raise the load. For that purpose here we have a diagram. Now in this diagram here as we can see there are threads. So this is I'll denote it as a square threaded screw. Here is the square threaded screw and it is rotated inside this nut. And here we have the handle of this square threaded screw. So how this works is that we have to rotate the handle and once we rotate the handle the screw rotates inside the nut and this mechanism it is used to lift heavy loads here as I have denoted by W this is the load which we want to lift by this square threaded screw. So we will keep the load over this head and then start rotating the handle. And when the screw it rotates, it would be pushing the load in the upward direction. Now, for this square threaded screw, here, as we know that in case of screw, it will rotate as well as it will move in the actual direction. So here, I can say that alpha is the helix angle. If pi d is the distance travelled by the screw in one rotation, then in that one rotation, it will cover a distance of one pitch denoted by small p. So this is a very interesting concept that if we rotate the screw by one rotation, in one complete rotation, it will travel the vertical distance equal to one pitch. So when it moves one pitch, it will be moving the load also by one pitch distance. So here I have drawn the diagram which is, I can say that this diagram indicates the various forces which are acting on a screw and how I have denoted it. Here this block is nothing but the load which we are keeping on the screw thread profile. This P indicates the effort which we are applying at the handle. This is the effort P. Now as the derivation is on torque required to raise the load. So here we are moving. We are moving in the horizontal direction that is I am applying this effort P and with the help of this effort P this block would be pulled along this inclined surface. Inclination is alpha which is called as helix angle So when I am applying a force of P this P will try to lift this load along the plane Now I can say that since the load is having a value of W it will act vertically downwards I have this angle as alpha so this would be 90 and this remaining angle is 90 minus alpha so at the center I am getting this angle as alpha so here there are two components of W one is W sin alpha which is parallel to the plane other is W cos alpha which is perpendicular to the plane similarly P is also inclined at an angle of alpha so there are two components P cos alpha along the plane P sin alpha perpendicular to the plane. Next as we know that whenever we are keeping any block on a surface then we are getting a normal reaction. So here is the normal reaction which is along the line of W cos alpha because it is perpendicular to the plane and normal reaction will always be perpendicular to the plane. Then 
as p cos alpha is trying this component of p cos alpha is trying to move the load upwards but here this would be opposed by friction so f denotes the friction force which is acting in the downward direction this f is equal to mu into rm so these are the forces acting on square threaded screw now after this i'll start the derivation part i'll say that here since here i have pi d and this p indicates pitch so therefore in this angle i'll say that tan alpha is equal to p upon pi d this is the starting part of the derivation i'll keep this as my equation number 1 here i'll write down where p is equal to pitch of screw thread it is in mm then d indicates the mean diameter of screw thread that is in terms of mm now what is this d mean diameter that i can show it with the diagram of the thread profile now here is the thread profile on this do indicates the outer diameter this minimum diameter is called as dc core diameter and <coughs> the mean of these or the average is called as the mean diameter which is denoted by a small d so this is the mean diameter it is given by d is equal to do plus dc by 2 now after reaching at equation number 1 now i'll say that resolving forces along the plane and for equilibrium condition here i'll mention the equilibrium condition for forces parallel to the plane and that will be summation of fx is equal to 0 so now if i look into this diagram the forces which are parallel p cos alpha is parallel to the plane f is parallel to the plane and w sin alpha is also parallel but here the sign convention i'll take it as if the force is parallel and acting upwards that has to be taken positive so p cos alpha is positive f that is mu rn is negative w sin alpha it is negative because it is downward in the downward direction so minus w sin alpha that is equal to 0 so now here i'll keep p on one side so therefore i'll shift all the terms on the other side p cos alpha will be equal to it is w sin alpha and mu rn so mu rn plus w sin alpha i've shifted these terms onto the other side 
now this i'll keep it as my equation number 2 the second equation now after this i will say that resolving forces perpendicular to the plane so for forces perpendicular to the plane i'll denote it by summation of fy is equal to zero now if i look into the diagram here rn is perpendicular to the plane w cos alpha is perpendicular and p sin alpha is perpendicular to the plane so upward force has to be taken positive rn is positive w cos alpha is negative p sin alpha is negative so that is equal to 0 now i will keep rn on one side p sin alpha shifts on to the other side so it is positive w cos alpha which is negative here if i shift it that becomes plus w cos alpha so i'll give this as equation number 3 now from equation 3 i'll put the value of rn in equation number 2 therefore put rn from equation 3 in equation 2 so i'll get this as therefore in equation 2 i have p cos alpha is equal to it is mu into rn rn value i'll put here so mu into rn is p sin alpha plus w into cos alpha and it is plus w sin alpha so now here i can simplify this by multiplying mu into this bracket and opening the terms so here i have p cos alpha is equal to mu into p sin alpha plus mu into w cos alpha plus here this is w sin alpha so now what i will do here is that bring this p that is effort term on one side keep this load term on one side so here i have therefore p cos alpha i'll shift this so minus mu p sin alpha here i have mu i'll keep this as w sin alpha plus mu w cos alpha now the next thing is here as i can see p is i can take common p is there in both the both the terms so it is p cos alpha minus mu sin alpha is equal to here i can take w common so w sin alpha plus mu into w cos alpha so therefore after this i can say that p i will keep it on one side this is equal to w here i am having sin alpha plus mu cos alpha shift this term into the denominator so cos alpha minus mu into sin alpha but here i can say that but mu is equal to tan phi that is 
this is called as phi is the friction angle so tan of that that is equal to mu so i'll put the value of mu is equal to tan phi so here it gets simplified to p is equal to w into sin alpha plus in place of mu i'll write down tan phi cos alpha upon cos alpha minus mu into mu i have put the value of mu as tan phi into sin alpha now as we know that tan phi it will be sin phi upon cos phi i will multiply it here so i'll get this as p is equal to w into sin alpha this tan phi is sin phi upon cos phi cos phi will get multiply here plus here i will have sin phi cos alpha and the denominator will be cos phi similarly here this is divided by here i'll have cos alpha into tan upon tan is sin upon cos so cos will get multiplied here cos phi minus sin phi sin alpha upon cos phi so as i can see here cos phi and cos phi will get cancelled out so therefore p is equal to w into sin alpha cos phi plus sin phi cos alpha divided by cos alpha cos phi minus sin phi sin alpha so now after reaching this stage here i can develop a formula of sin a plus b and cos a plus b so it will be written as therefore p is equal to sin alpha plus phi upon cos alpha plus phi here i have developed the formula because this is sin a cos b plus sin b cos a that is nothing but sin a plus b next cos a cos b minus sin b into sin a that is cos a plus b so this will be equal to tan alpha plus phi now therefore here i am having w as well so that we have to remember that even w is here so this w is multiplied even here i am having into w so finally p value will be w into this tan alpha plus phi it can be simplified as tan alpha plus tan phi upon 1 minus tan alpha into tan phi now this i'll give it as equation number a equation a and here i can say that therefore from equation number a actual effort applied to raise the load can be calculated so now after getting equation a that is called as actual effort and why it is called as actual effort because here we are considering tan phi and this indicates friction angle so once we are considering the friction between screw and nut then this efforts bec effort becomes actual effort 
so once we have actual effort the derivation was about it was about torque required to raise the load so here i can say that after this therefore torque required to rotate the screw that i'll write it onto the next page so torque required to rotate the screw t it will be equal to p multiplied by d by 2 here i have drawn this screw thread profile that that is from the top view it will look like a circle now here in order to rotate this screw we will be applying effort p at this end and the distance from the center up to this effort p this distance is nothing but d by 2 because the diameter of screw which we are taking that is the mean diameter denoted by d so now therefore torque required to raise the load t is the torque which is required to rotate the screw i'll denote it by t1 so that is equal to p we have got from equation a w into tan alpha plus tan phi upon 1 minus tan alpha into tan phi multiplied by d by 2 so this much is the torque because torque causes rotation if i multiply p into d by 2 that torque will rotate the screw now after getting t1 i'll keep this as equation b now this is the torque required to rotate the screw sometimes what happen is that when we are placing this load this head will also rotate and there are chances of this load to also rotate along with the head so in order to avoid the rotation of the load what we are doing is that we provide an arrangement called as the cup here i'm i'll draw the diagram for that here this is the diagram of the cup which i am drawing i'll section it now here this is the head over that we are placing a cup and now the load will be acting on this cup and since the surface is like a groove it will avoid the rotation of the load and here i have the square thread so now here what happens is that when we are using the cup then at the handle we even need to apply the torque in order to overcome the friction at this cup so what we can do is that here we will have two values of radius one is the inner radius and other will be the outer radius of the cup outer radius i'll denote it by r1 and inner radius i'll denote it by r2 so if i draw the profile of this cup it will be like this now this is the top view of the cup which i am drawing 
and here r1 will be its outer radius r2 is the inner radius so now we need to even overcome the friction at this cup and that torque we need to apply to rotate this to up, apply to overcome the friction at the cup that is designed by using the theory of clutch so i'll say that therefore by uniform wear theory torque required to overcome friction at the cup that is denoted by t2 and it is equal to mu w rm so here we have the formula of torque required to overcome the friction at the cup where mu indicates the coefficient of friction between i'll denote it by mu1 coefficient of friction between the cup and the head so now this i'll keep it as equation number c where rm that is the mean radius it will be equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 so hence i'll say that therefore total torque required to raise the load it will be capital t is equal to t1 plus t2 t1 it was in equation number b that is the torque required to rotate the screw t2 is in equation c torque required to overcome friction at the cup once we add these two torque values we would be getting the total torque required to raise the load so here as we have seen in this video we have derived the formula to calculate the torque required to raise the load